We've now seen how the standard economic framework can help us think about how people make choices about the future, how they discount the future, and how, while they may be more or less patient, the behavior that emerges is time consistent. We saw this first in an example where we considered two types of choices. In the first choice, you could choose between getting $100 12 months from now or waiting an additional month to get $105. In the second choice, you could take $100 now or wait for a month for $105 a month from now. And we said that patient people will always wait. They'll always choose the $105. Whereas impatient people will not wait. They'll always choose the $100. But their behavior will be time consistent. When psychologists do experiments like this, they find that some people will choose, when they think about the future, to wait and say, we're going to choose that $105 13 months from now rather than the $100 12 months from now. But when the choice occurs in the present, they choose to go for the $100 now rather than wait for the extra $5 a month from now. That behavior is not time consistent and it's evidence of what we call present bias. When the future come, becomes the present, there's a bias to its being more impatient. And so the behavior isn't consistent over time. So when we see this reversal, when the future becomes the present, we call that present bias. Now, present biased individuals may have self-control problems in the sense that they'll make a plan for what they'll do in the future, but then when the future becomes the present, they won't execute that plan. They'll do something different. They'll be more impatient than they had planned to be. That doesn't happen in the standard economic framework. So how would we adjust that framework to account for behavior like that? Well, it turns out that there's a simple way to do it. Instead of assuming that people discount the future in the way that we described in the previous module, we simply add another term called beta. We add another term here and another term here. That beta represents present bias. So that beta represents present bias if it's less than one. So how does that work in terms of the decisions people make? Well, let's think back to the example where you asked in the present, whether you're willing to make an investment that has a certain cost a year from now in order to get a benefit two years from now. When we think about that, we have to discount the future. We're sitting in the present, so the cost is happening a year from now, so we have to discount it by the discount rate that applies for one year from now. Well, that is now beta delta. So when we think about what's the present discounted value of that cost, it would now be beta delta. What would be, I mean beta delta C, what would be the present discounted value of the benefit two years from now? Well, we have to discount by this. So that would be beta squ delta squared times B. As long as the present discounted value of the cost is less than the present discounted value of the benefit, we'll go ahead and choose to plan to make that investment. But now see that we have a beta on both sides, so we can just cancel that. And we can divide by delta to get rid of the delta on this side and the exponent on this side. So this inequality is exactly equal to the equality C is less than delta B. We simply cancel the beta and then cancel the delta and the exponent. So when we ask at time zero in the present, will you plan to make the investment? The answer is you will with this present bias, so long as C is less than delta B. Exactly the same rule we had under the standard economic model. But now fast forward a year, the future has become the present and you now have to decide, will you actually make the investment? So now we're sitting at time one we don't have to discount the cost because it's happening immediately. So the cost now has to be less than 
the discounted value of the benefit which will happen a year from now. So we have to discount that by what's relevant for one year from now. Beta delta B. Now the rule has changed. While we plan to make the investment so long as C is less than delta B, we're actually going to make the investment when the time comes as long as C is less than beta delta B. Now if beta is equal to 1, the rule ends up being the same again. So the standard economic framework implicitly assumes that beta is equal to 1 and we don't have present bias. But when beta is less than 1, this term falls, which means that there are certain costs at which we're willing to plan to make the investment. But then when the time comes, we've discounted that benefit further and we're no longer willing to make the investment. So we're making a plan for the future, but when the future becomes the present, we don't execute that plan. Our behavior is time inconsistent, and we have a self-control problem in the sense that we can't follow through on plans we make for the future.